How do we manage the seasons? Some of the livestock farmers keep are seasonal too. Sheep will only breed and mate in the autumn. This is so they have their lambs in the spring. Are busy preparing their sheep for breeding. In the hills and moors where many sheep are kept, this means fetching them down to the low land near the farm. Once here they will be flushed. This means they are given extra food or just put on lush grass so that they are in better condition when they are introduced to the male sheep called rams or tups. I'm Ollie Hayward, uh, this is Moore Farm at Chipton Thorpe. Um, we farm, we have just under 2,000 ewes. And so we're quite busy. This is just one of the flocks. We have several flocks dotted on several different farms around the district. It's autumn at the moment, mid-November. Um, one of the reasons why the, the, the tups are in with the ewes at the moment is the tups, or rather the other ewes, the female sheep, can only come into season. They can only fertilise with other tups when the days get really short. So the lambs will always be born in the spring will always go in in the autumn. There's a lovely little farmer saying, if you put the tups in on bonfire night, the lambs will be born on April Fool's Day. So, big old tup, the male sheep. Most of the sheep are females in here. And his job is to mate the sheep. Now, we have a special way of telling why or when the tups are mated with the youth. I shall turn him over and I'll show you. He's very big and heavy, so here goes. There we go. Are you sitting comfortably? Yes. Right. This here, this is a wax block, wax crayon. And we, we call it a rattle mark or a rattle crayon. And he wears a special harness. When he mates with a ewe, it leaves a mark on her rump, on her tail. Now we change this crayon, this mark, every 10 days. The first 10 days we had a green crayon on and some of the ewes, one just there, had a green mark on her rump. She was served with a green crayon. After 10 days we changed it to the blue one. We changed these only a couple of days ago. And you look to see one or two with blue marks on their rump. That's because they've been served and mate with this tub or with a A tub. Other farm animals like pigs will breed all year round. Here are some male pigs called balls.
this one is having an injection as it has been unwell. This pigman is very experienced. Bars can be very dangerous. Here's some sows which have had their visit to the bar pigs. The farmer is scanning these cells to see if they are pregnant. A sow is pregnant for 3 months, 3 weeks and 3 days, which roughly means 114 days. Can you see the outline of the baby pigs on the scanner? There's one there, there's one there, two right together. We will follow these sheep and pigs through their pregnancy over the coming programmes. Many of the products of harvest are seasonal. They're only ripe or ready to eat for a short time during the year. So we've had to find ways to store these products of harvest. So we can enjoy them for a longer period, or as we have now come to expect, all year round. Some foods can stand cold weather, and provided the weather allows, they can be harvested and enjoyed fresh over the winter, such as these cauliflowers and cabbages. Other crops can be harvested over the winter if we protect them from the worst of the weather. Like these carrots being covered with straw to protect them from the frost. Other crops like these potatoes must be harvested and then stored in insulated sheds. This protects them from the weather and frosts. Some crops like peas have only a very short harvest window. These can be preserved by freezing them.
Some foods cannot be stored or frozen very well. We can preserve them in tins, but they don't taste the same as fresh ones. With today's transport we can enjoy fresh ones out of season by importing them from countries which can grow them all year round. Enjoying food out of season uses lots of food miles and has an environmental cost. So you need to realise this when you are making your choices in the shop. Right, what I'm going to plant today is some onion sets which will be will grow over the winter and be ready next spring. So I've worked the ground and I've made a drill about half the depth of the onion sets and then you place the onion sets in the drill anywhere, anywhere from an inch to four inches apart and in new money that's two and a half centimetres to ten centimetres apart. The closer together you get you plant them the smaller will be the final bulbs that you harvest so probably somewhere in between that's probably about right but about five centimetres apart is a good, uh, good distance apart so make sure you get the bulb the onion bulb or onion set the right way up so the pointed end up push it into the ground you push it in and then when you've done them all just rake them back but you can you really you want to see the top part just poking through ideally and then when we've done them all because we've got these poking through and they'll start to grow green birds will really take an eye on them so we're going to cover them over with a net. Right, we've got the onion sets planted here, three rows of different variety of onion sets. In this row here I'm going to plant some garlic. Now garlic needs to go in a little bit deeper so I've done a big deeper trench and you put your garlic cloves in and then the one covering over with about two centimetres of soil. Now the thing to remember about garlic cloves is garlic needs to be dormant in the ground for a little while before it starts and grows. So if you bury these with under two centimetres, it might be quite a while before you see any sign of growth, but don't worry, they will eventually come out, but it might, might not be as, as quick as the onions. All right, so there's the garlic cloves. Remember, I ordered this as garlic, bought these as garlic cloves to sow, but you could equally use them, try them that you buy in the supermarket. And obviously you get the clove like that, and you break it up into the individual cloves and then just probably plant the best ones that one's already started to sprout look all right so simply push them down into the soil and like that just set them in the bottom of your trench and then when i've done them all i'll cover them over with soil so they've got a good covering of soil over about two centimeters 